so after having discussed a bit the the methods in, in the http protocol let's start uh, to see how to implement them so how to uh, publish our own uh, little web server um, web servers are a, a big topic in the web applications they are very complex uh, uh, to support to implement uh, and uh, and there are many different ver uh, versions and types of web servers available uh, in this course since the focus is on the front end we'll only uh, see a very minimal part uh, of what we need to do just the minimum amount of server side uh, that we will use uh, uh, to support our our applications mm -hmm. and uh, in particular uh, we'll uh, in our uh, idea of uh, working and studying better the javascript language we'll work uh, with one javascript uh, web server uh, it's not probably the best choice in the large uh, because uh, uh, JavaScript is uh, a bit too slow when compared to other languages, to other frameworks. Uh, and so you will not find many real websites uh, that with high volume websites that are running JavaScript on the server side. But for simplicity, since we are uh, analyzing the lang this language, uh, we'll start to, uh, to, do a, uh, to see a full stack JavaScript uh, implementation and in later courses you can uh, uh, learn more about uh, uh, more powerful choices on the server side and uh, actually uh, the kind of uh, framework we are going to study here is a, a javascript framework which is called uh, express um, express uh, uh, is um, implements a, a minimal web server a simple web server uh, the, the amount uh, of complexity that uh, is suitable for for, for this course uh, uh, and uh, uh, it's implemented in JavaScript uh, and it will allow us to, um, uh, to um, define uh, um, functionalities, so defining our application in the JavaScript language. So it may host both uh, static contents, so it's a basic web server that will uh, serve uh, static resources using HTTP. So get index.html will deliver you a file which is called index.html, it's a static resource. Uh, or you can define your own dynamic uh, APIs, your own dynamic methods. So you are uh, posting something to a page and this page will analyze the data, store that, uh, um, compute something about that and so on. So both uh, the dynamic and static part uh, can, be, can be allowed. And of course, uh, uh, since you are inside the Node uh, Node.js, uh, uh, you can uh, use any kind of uh, Node.js package you want, for example, those that support databases. So it will also be useful as a layer for persistence of our web applications. Uh, so let's dig into uh, Express and see how it works. Uh, basically, Express is not the only uh, HTTP server uh, or, or web application server available in the node uh, environment uh, there are many uh, uh, web frameworks available uh, here we have a slide with some some of them with the num with, the po with their popularity uh, according to github uh, basically even the the native uh, node.js is includes already a web server um, which is called HTTP, the mo a module, a node module, which is called HTTP, but it's not uh, uh, very powerful. It's very basic in their function, in its functionality. So usually uh, people tend to use other frameworks uh, uh, that are easier to use because they implement uh, um, more functionality out of the box. Uh, Express uh, is one of the most popular ones uh, and uh, quite easy to use. So for, for our purpose uh, of getting uh, something online qu uh, quickly, uh, it could be enough. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you want, you can explore some more of them on this page. There's a quite comprehensive uh, set of links. Uh, installing Express, uh, of course, uh, is, uh, means uh, installing the, the module, the node module uh, uh, for Express and uh, uh, creating and running a simple jav javascript file that we may call here index.js or something like that so maybe we can try that uh, uh, interactively uh, so we can go in parallel uh, with the explanation so i opened uh, a new folder here on our server and uh, uh, we can initialize uh, uh, the repository the, the, the folder with npm init so that it will create a node modules folder where we can install some everything else npm init uh, asks us uh, basic, some basic questions and say that uh, after you initialize the folder then you can run npm install that will be downloaded into this uh, uh, node modules uh, folder so uh, the package name uh, is version most of the questions are just uh, 
uh, we can just uh, reply with, uh, with an empty line index.js is a nice uh, uh, default name uh, and uh, and everything else can be can be empty mm -hmm. so we can let uh, uh, node create uh, uh, this packet.json file that will be useful also used for, used for for recording all the dependencies and uh, uh, for uh, uh, for enabling the development of express uh, applications here in this folder uh, we can install express hmm? npm install express and then uh, node will download the express uh, middleware and uh, uh, we'll uh, uh, save it uh, into the node modules package so you see that the node modules folder has been created by the install application that includes a lot of stuff uh, including uh, uh, somewhere the express here uh, library and all the dependency dependencies that express depends on hmm? and uh, just to, to be a bit familiar and this has been written in the title packet.json uh, where in the dependencies uh, part uh, uh, the npm install just wrote that uh, this project uh, depends on the availability of express mm -hmm. um, so that at the next time when you uh, when you can replicate your projects uh, somewhere else uh, you can uh, automatically download all the packages that are dependencies for for this uh, one project okay uh, and then what what it says here is that we just need uh, to create a file called index.js uh, and that will be our web application mm -hmm. so what do we put into the uh, index.js so this is a minimal this slide shows a minimal um, uh, web application used uh, using uh, uh, express um, so it's four lines of code uh, so we can create that and test that uh, uh, immediately in real time uh, the four lines are the creation of the application so uh, here and of course it requires uh, the package so we can use the require method for uh, importing the the library the package and uh, it will be stored into this uh, variable and this variable uh, will uh, it will be a function that constructs a new application so we can store the application into uh, our variable and we can start the web servers down there at the bottom so after listen will open a socket uh, in our uh, server uh, listening on a specific port name and uh, okay this is uh, just a callback for success well, telling us uh, uh, okay, um, call, this callback is, is, is executed when uh, when the application is started, mm -hmm. and then all the uh, work of the application is inside all the content of the web application is inside uh, uh, this app dot get uh, method uh, that uh, um, uh, we'll see uh, how how to implement it uh, in detail mm -hmm. because that's uh, just uh, the part where the, the web application is defined. So let's try to create one of them, a new file called index.js. So we can simply require require the express and then we can create uh, so we const express the module and then we create the application by default we don't need to specify any additional parameters but of course we could there's a, a parameter for creating the application and then as we said we uh, start the application start the web server by listening on a given port for example by default usually uh, express uses the port 3000 and uh, we have a so a port number uh, possible string for host name but we just uh, stay with the default uh, um, localhost and then a callback so let's specify the callback uh, uh, by saying uh, uh, console.log uh, application start and uh, semicolon here semicolon there okay uh, 
and this is a basic structure of the uh, of the application if you want to run it just uh, run node index.js and it will start right now it's a bit uh, of a useless application because it doesn't uh, do anything it will not respond to any request hmm? so it's just a web server that will never respond to any request so it's a bit useless so let's stop it with ctrl c and uh, let's see how to create uh, uh, the, the the routes and the web pages uh, creating the web pages uh, uh, basically means uh, uh, defining a so-called uh, route that will send uh, these uh, terminology uh, stands for uh, routing or, or sending a request to the specific method which is able to handle it so basically we define a set of handlers which are javascript functions callbacks that can be executed uh, to uh, to deal with some part of the web page of the website hmm? and uh, the, the routing me mechanism uh, decide which handler to call depending on the method of the call so it may be uh, a get or a post and the path that has been called hmm? so this example shows that uh, we are defining a route for executing this callback so uh, hello world um, this callback is executed when the server uh, received the request for the root path and uh, with a get method get and root and slash uh, are the two um, say filter the two characteristics that uh, define uh, the root for which this specific callback is active uh, and the callback uh, it's a function that receives uh, the, uh, two parameters uh, that are traditionally called uh, rec and res uh, they stand for request and response mm -hmm. so this callback uh, uh, gets two parameters the first one is the request object uh, we, we don't need uh, usually to to get information from the request object except uh, when we have parameter uh, parameters in the query or a body in the request and then we can access those information uh, from the uh, from these properties that are available on the request object mm -hmm. so for example if a method uh, contains a query uh, so, so sorry is the query is the get contains some query parameters so the word question mark uh, username equal to something uh, then we can get these parameters into the query object uh, uh, property of the request object mm -hmm. Uh, and uh, when we have some body, uh, some content in the body of the request, uh, we can uh, analyze that uh, in the body uh, property. Uh, we'll see some examples uh, how to do that uh, in uh, very shortly. Um, and we are more interested uh, uh, in the response object. This is uh, uh, we are we need to create a response. Okay, we are we are the web server. And we are the server means that when we receive a request, uh, we must generate a response. And uh, uh, basically, we can generate a response by using these uh, three methods. Uh, one is a simple redirect, so go uh, to uh, uh, generate another request because the resp this request this has been moved, uh, or uh, send that will send uh, a. a an okay response so with a code 200 with any specific body uh, that we can uh, specify in the in the, um, in the in the in the as a parameter of the send function or if our uh, response is an object uh, we can use a uh, res.json that will serialize the object into the json text format and then uh, return that uh, to the caller so the simplest one is send that will just uh, uh, create a web page with specified content so we can test that here in our simple application so we are defining a route with app dot get whenever i have a get request on the home page of the website then i can define this callback this handler request response to uh, to respond by sending uh hello there response so if i'm sending a get to this address this address of course on the local host uh, on port 3000 
the the response will be this string this text string uh, of course uh, you, this should be html probably uh, but uh, uh, right now we don't uh, we don't we don't need that uh, uh, that complexity at the moment so if we start the application now again and at this point we can just open up a web browser uh, and uh, set the address to localhost 3000 and uh, we see that the content of uh, our uh, string is included in the web page so this uh, string here hello there is shown in the browser we can see it better if we look in the in the, in the inspector in the network panel uh, we can redo the request and we see that uh, the browser just issued a get request uh, without to our URL so a get uh, to the uh, resource uh, uh, slash uh, and the response uh, that it got uh, was uh, hello there hmm, with actually one text file with these two words this is not proper uh, HTML, of course, uh, it's just uh, some, some, some portion of text, but here we have the basic uh, uh, functionality of the web server. Hmm. Uh, if we, sorry. Uh, so basically we are defining a route and sending the content corresponding to what the web server should publish uh, on that route. Um, there are different methods for generative uh, response so the, the easiest one is the send method that we are already uh, uh, saw in this uh, simple example and uh, we have uh, an end method that is used to send a, a response without a body so for the methods uh, that don't require body to be sent uh, we can just call end instead of send uh, we can use status to for setting the response status code so normally send uh, will uh, and and will reply with a, a code of 200 but if we want to change the code uh, we can do that uh, by changing the they call the status method uh, and then calling send uh, by the way this method can be changed because each of the, each one of them will uh, return the same uh, uh, resource that has been modified if we want to return an object uh, then we can we can use the json method uh, and we'll, we will use the, uh, this method primarily and uh, uh, we want the user not to dis the user browser not to display the content but to uh, save it on their computer uh, you can use the download method uh, by the way we are not uh, uh, going to much detail about uh, the send method here because uh, uh, that will be used uh, in general for generating web pages mm -hmm. And so uh, usually the, the parameter here should be the, the a very long string containing the HTML of the whole page. Mm -hmm. And maybe the HTML has some parameter contents inside so that needs to be constructed. And there are uh, extensions to Express uh, uh, usually uh, used for defining uh, the content of these pages using templates. So templates of an HTML file with some placeholders where you can insert dynamic values and so on. We are not going to see this, that part, so if you're interested, you can uh, search for templating uh, into, into Express uh, um, because our kind of in our kind of applications, basically, all the dynamic part content will be generated by the client part and not by the server part. We do. So the, the um, HTTP server will be used mainly for providing the APIs, for providing data and not for providing uh, interactive web pages. Mm -hmm. That's why we are, we are cutting it sh uh, very short uh, while actually it would be a very huge topic to explore how to dynamically create the HTML pages without too much pain. Uh, another detail, if we want to redirect a page, uh, there's a method in the response that will send out uh, a redirect response uh, with a new address. Uh, so we can uh, easily remap, for example, the slash address into an index of HTML in a, in a separate folder if you want to redirect uh, parts of your website. And uh, uh, this is the basic mechanism. Uh, actually, uh, Express is much more flexible uh, because it allows us to define a set of middlewares. Hmm? Middleware is a big word, uh, but uh, in Express it just means a function, a JavaScript function, that is called for every request. Basically, we can define one or more middlewares 
uh, and each of them is a function and all these functions will be called in sequence one after the other and each of them will uh, receive a, a copy of the request object and of the response object they can analyze these objects they can modify some properties of these objects and then when a given middle function has terminated processing the request and the response it will call next and calling next will just call or move to the next middleware function and when all the middlewares have completed their task then calling next will actually call our own specific handler so middlewares usually uh, do some generic operations that will apply to every request uh, and at the end we will have our own specific handler that will do the specific operation for that that specific request and how to define a middleware is just by using the use method and where we define the name of the or the function that to be used as a middleware and fortunately we can define our own uh, but uh, um, uh, express already defines some of them that are quite useful the user uh, call can define a middleware for the whole site for every request or only for the request that match a given path so we want to execute a middleware only on some specific path of our website we can use that and so uh, the, it will only be inserted the processing of this middleware function will only be inserted whenever the, the request path will match uh, this specified path and the easiest middle uh, where also one of the most important is the static one so there's a method into express into the express object which is called static hmm, that will allow us to define uh, static rules so express.static will map a given uh, all the requests to a given folder in your file system to a given directory to a good root director so if we have a set of files which are static files don't need to be analyzed don't need to be dynamically processed so we have maybe uh, html files uh, css javascript uh, everything that doesn't need to be processed uh, images uh, that doesn't need to be processed on the server side we just need to serve them so we are just interested in the http transfer of these uh, elements uh, and not on any processing of them so this uh, uh, static will automatically publish uh, make available all the resources under under the specified directory so uh, this is of course is a is a generates um, returns um, a callback function so we must register this middleware with the user method so we are saying use for this application this middleware function express.static and this middleware is configured to render public uh, the content also to, to serve the content of the public directory so if we have some files into the public directory and also on subfolders of the public directory they'll they will be accessible hmm? immediately at the uh, they will be published immediately at the root of the website hmm? so if i'm searching for hello.html it will actually be served statically from the public directory uh, by searching a file called hello.html into this public directory uh, usually maybe we want to serve them uh, from uh, a, a different uh, url to publish this content of the directory on a different uh, url no? so for example here we can have uh, uh, we can we want maybe to publish these resources into a different uh, url and so we just register this static uh, callback uh, to this uh, uh, other path so just uh, don't don't be confused uh, this one is the name of the directory on the server it's something that is hidden will be we will never be visible by the user and this is the public location on our website where we are publishing these resources hmm? we can register even more than one static group of rules uh, and they will be all uh, combined into uh, one single um, uh, website mm. um, okay uh, so this is for for serving the, the static part of the site huh? so maybe we want to have uh, some uh, uh, instead of uh, uh, sending this response uh, we may have maybe as um, we would want to create uh, a new subdirectory called uh, 
maybe static or public and inside public we can create uh, maybe an, a file index.html and in this HTML file we can maybe serve something uh, uh, welcome to express and uh, blah 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 let's keep that uh, and the body we say h1 welcome p statically served page hmm? so in order to make these public pages uh, be visible and we see that this page will include the main.js hmm? probably we can include uh, a css we can include scripts uh, and from the server point of view they will be just uh, separate requests uh, for files that can be served from the public directory hmm? so we stop the application here and we modify the js index.js by saying okay i want to register use the uh, express.static for the directory called public relative to the document root so we can for for the moment uh, delete this one then we are publishing the, uh, this entire website let's try it again node index.js start in the directory and we reload the page and uh, uh, automatically the root uh, will uh, uh, load the the index.html file which is the default for the directory hmm. so right now we are loading the static contents from that public so if we want to put some html some css some javascript we just put everything be be um, besides the uh, static uh, uh, folder here hmm? uh, sorry the the public folder there. so we can add some information we see that the browser say that okay uh, i try to load main.js it doesn't exist uh, we know we know uh, because we haven't created it yet so right now our browser is showing an html page uh, which is not loaded directly from our hard disk but is fetched through http hmm, from this uh, uh, localhost server from this express server which is running on our computer right now this server is doing really uh, a stupid uh, work because it's just uh, taking uh, uh, files uh, from the public directory and returning them hmm? so there's no logic in this application uh, at the moment um, okay there is uh, okay if we want to do something more complex of course we need to define our own uh, specific uh, uh, methods that can also uh, interpret uh, some specific uh, parameters that come from the user for example in a normal get you can specify a path but this path can also contain some query parameters hmm? so for example the path can contain a question mark user equal name of the user password equal to a number this can be generated by a form by an html form um, where the user fills those values or they may be generated by uh, some javascript code that will just send these uh, values so how can the application uh, access this information of course in this case we must uh, define the uh, the handling of those uh, um, parameters here in the code uh, uh, and not in the public directory because uh, uh, it's not just serving a static file but the content of the response will depend on the query parameters and uh, or uh, so in this case when we have some query parameters uh, these values will be stored into the query property of the request object and so every query parameter will be stored as a different property inside the the, the code so let's try it uh, maybe we want to define a, a, a login a login page and this login route will uh, 
request response served by this callback where we want to check the username by getting the query uh, the request dot uh, uh, what's that um, query dot user and cost password is from request query dot pass hmm? and maybe we want to set some un some default In the case those parameters are not being specified by the user and then we can we should create an HTML page that con that will contain uh, uh, information uh, about uh, this log this user whether it's uh, allowed or not but for the moment we just display what what we received mm -hmm. okay. and uh, um, uh, we just send as a response as a message saying uh, uh, receive data received or login request received by uh, user password equal to password Okay, so let's try again. So we may now try to uh, restart the application and we see it's a bit boring because every time we have to stop and restart uh, the application. And there's a trick for, uh, for doing that automatically, uh, which is installing a, a package which is called NodeMon, which is not, stands for Node Monitor. Uh, we can install them globally and PM globally uh, install no install uh, globally not more and uh, it will install a, a new uh, executable which is called nodmon that can, we can use uh, just to run our code and at that point, uh, it'll, uh, our web server will be restarted automatically whenever uh, our JavaScript code will change. Mm -hmm. So, uh, which is uh, a, a good way of uh, doing that by uh, in, in development mode, of course, uh, not by not not in the normal execution of the application. But when we are developing, every time we modify a JavaScript file, then this node mon module will uh, restart the web server. Mm. So we don't need to control C and then not j not index uh, every time. Mm. So it's a bit uh, an easier way. But we were uh, testing this uh, login page. So if we say slash login, login requester received by unknown password unknown, of course. But if we specify the parameters, user equal to I don't know Fulvio, password is is equal to one two three four five and uh, we are uh, our code is uh, be able to access uh, these uh, variables uh, uh, fulvio and pa uh, the username and the password mm, from the code so uh, data is embedded into the uh, uh, request url and is uh, uh, available to the query uh, property of the request object and of course, if uh, we, we see that if the request, if the variable is not uh, specified, we have a null and we can uh, use this null for checking and for setting defaults or for sending errors or something like that. Okay, uh, next step, if, uh, what, what happens if the data that we received is not stored into the query, but uh, is stored into some post or put uh, body mm, of the request? Uh, in this case, uh, the values are uh, available not in the query object, but it's an object called body. So because there are uh, parameters stored in the body. Mm -hmm. And uh, usually if you try to access the body property, you will find it's empty unless uh, you uh, install uh, one or the other or both of these middlewares uh, that enable the parsing of the real response body and the extraction of the properties that we need. 
so whenever we want to receive and process forms we need to uh, install this middleware if we need to uh, process uh, json data that we will uh, we need to install also expert.json um, concerning pass uh, express is more powerful than what we have uh, done uh, up to now uh, because uh, we can send uh, we can specify the path with different syntaxes uh, with a normal string which we interpret as a, as a prefix uh, with a pattern so we can have some wildcards saying that c is optional or b can be repeated one or more times uh, or b can be repeated zero or more times with the asterisk so it's a simplified form of regular expression and uh, a with the b or uh, nc optional so it will match a d or a b c d and uh, or, or we can use the uh, reg apps object which is uh, in uh, predefined in javascript so we don't didn't see that in just the introduction but there's a specific type of string uh, which is del delimited by slashes instead of uh, quotes uh, that is able to uh, natively uh, create a reg app object in javascript that will be matched uh, uh, automatically to the um, to the uh, query re request uh, um, path uh, parameter or we may define a single callback single callback for more than one path and uh, in this case the same function will be called uh, on, on, on every of them okay uh, so it, the same functionality will appear on different will be published on different parts uh, of the website mm -hmm. so if you are trying to do something more complex uh, of course you can do that uh, but okay we can play with strings uh, but the more uh, interesting part is that you can Im embed some parameters uh, in the uh, request path. Um, this means that uh, some portions uh, of the request can be uh, left free and can be uh, matched to some specific uh, named parameters. So, for example, if I have a URL like this, uh, users slash colon user ID, books uh, colon book ID, We'll see a lot of these strings in the REST APIs. Uh, this means that every this may, will match every uh, U, uh, URL that contains in the path slash users slash anything slash books slash anything else. And this anything and anything else will be mapped uh, to specific parameters. So whenever we have a column in the path specification, if we are marking a parameter. Uh, and the parameter segment uh, of the query and uh, uh, these segments uh, can be uh, mapped or matched by any content that the user will send into the request url and so in this case uh, this url will match this parameter parametric path uh, and in particular 34 will be matched the user id parameter and 8999 will be matched to the book ID parameter. And in, the, in our callback, uh, we have a, a, a para params, a parameters uh, uh, property that will be populated with user ID and book ID. Okay. So we are able, with a single uh, specification, path specification that contains parameters, to get, uh, uh, to, to serve uh, with, a, with a single callback uh, a group of similar URLs hmm? so we can create uh, actually many URLs dynamically according to the content of some portions of the path itself hmm? uh, by the way in this case it's matching everything else we've shown some numbers here but can, they can also be letters if we if you want uh, uh, to um, to restrict the kind of, uh, of um, the format of data that can be used in place of the parameters so you can use some regular expressions just following the user id so in this case user slash user id and this is the regular expression composed of a sequence of digits uh, so the user id is only a sequence of digits hmm? or you can use any kind of regular expression to constrain the format uh, of the parameter so the path will be matched only if the format is correct otherwise you are not going to match that uh, uh, that address hmm? so this is a very powerful mechanism we we will use it a lot uh, basically a lot more than other uh, query parameters uh, or form parameters uh, another uh, useful thing that we we can do in our in our applications uh, because you see that uh, the server is quite silent so when we navigate uh, we can see in the browser 
the request that we are making so the browser will in the, in the in the inspector will tell us everything but the uh, you see the application console is quite uh, silent hmm? uh one useful uh, thing that we should do when when doing development uh, is uh, uh, logging the request so showing uh, the web server will show what request it, it gets uh, so that we are sure uh, that the, the the server is it's getting the the right requests uh, um, and again there's a package for that uh, which is called the Morgan, which is a middleware already predefined by, by the experts team. And so we can, in this case, we can stop the application. We can install Morgan uh, NPM, sorry. And at this point, we can also add this Morgan const uh, Morgan required uh, yeah and then we use uh, we register also the logger organ of the tiny format for example the parameter of the logger is uh, just the format in which we want to show the the, the, the information okay so in this case, when we restart the server, and every time we, with the browser, we require a page, uh, the uh, application will print a message. So let's do it again. Should print a message. with the request received let me debug it later hmm? uh, but i'm sure I, I can guarantee it's working um, okay uh, another interesting middleware hmm, that we can use uh, into express uh, is uh, uh, for validating the inputs um, in particular we may add um, a, a to, for, to any to any request method we can add a second parameter so we had the first parameter was the path the other parameter the last one was the callback but actually you can add a new um, a new uh, parameter which is an array an array of checks to be validated uh, this uh, of course requires uh, an, another middleware which is called the express validator hmm? so you can see the, the documentation there for installing that but uh, once you are ins installed that, uh, you, uh, will, you may avoid doing a lot of checks uh, on the inputs uh, because it's all declarative. So you can say, okay, before, this is sort of a middleware that we installed for this specific request. And the middleware is composed by these two functions, check and check. And in particular, check the username, which is an, whether it's an email, so it's an email format, uh, the password, whether the, its length is a minimum five, we can change these properties. Uh, we have a, a lot of a very long list of properties uh, uh, that can be checked so if you go to this uh, uh, page you will see a lot of properties that can be checked so what happens is that uh, before your request is uh, is uh, given to your callback uh, this uh, library will do all the checks that you specify uh, so you can uh, specify a lot of uh, uh, different conditions and you have a method called validation results that uh, give you a list uh, of problems or, or issues uh, with this uh, um, with the, all these checks so when when these validation results uh, will be empty then uh, there will be no well you know that there are no issues and all the constraints are being satisfied otherwise there are some errors so you can return maybe a status error with a body where by telling to the client uh, what happened uh, or what uh, what was wrong uh, in your um, in your request hmm? uh, so it's another if you want to uh, analyze uh, the the request from the user uh, probably it's better also to uh, to consider that hmm? in this case these parameters uh, will be in the in the request body where you see it as a post uh, but you can also uh, um, use this method for validating json parameters 
and you see there's a lot of there are a lot of extensions uh, uh, in in express uh, that uh, uh, help us to add uh, additional functionality to the basic one so the basic uh, app.get method is very very simple uh, but it mm, doesn't do a lot of work it just relies on us doing everything else uh, the power of express is having many smaller functions that can be combined together with this method of middleware of registering middleware uh, so that we can uh, plug in different behaviors uh, and obtain the level of complexity that we actually need so for example the morgan uh, um, logger is uh, mentioned here uh, and uh, these are basically the, the official ones uh, uh, suggested by the by the experts team and uh, um, finally i would just to point you to the course uh, uh, extension that we need uh, we will later on study because we will need to use that when we need to uh, have a different application collaborate uh, even if they are hosted on the on different web servers the server static is something that uh, has already been we already be used uh, uh, this uh, express to static there there uh, in some cases uh, if you are building a, a bit more complex application you will probably need to use sessions uh, that rely on cookies and so on so this basically uh, from in the basic installation express doesn't give you any facilities for creating a web application but if you are adding uh, the, the the middleware that you need uh, uh, it will become uh, actually uh, more powerful and will uh, uh, process uh, more intelligently uh, all the all the requests uh, that you um, that you want uh, um, and that, that you want to process and you want to receive mm -hmm. so this is the basic part and now we are shifting uh, for a moment uh, to the client side to see uh, how we can call these uh, functions so right now we just tested by entering all URLs by hand into a web server. Of course, we could create more complex HTML pages with scripts, with links, uh, but that will not change significantly uh, the way we were working without a web server before. Right now the web server will be used uh, basically for, uh, for uh, offering APIs uh, to, the, um, to, the, to, the, uh, to the front end application. And so at that point, there are two missing ingredients. Is one is uh, how to design the APIs on the server, and the other is uh, how to call this method from the JavaScript code. And that will be the content of the next two classes. <laughs>